Hello class, today's lesson is 4-4 in your textbooks and it's all about how to prove triangles congruent by this thing called SSS. And it is um, a postulate that we're going to learn that is all about side, side, side. So this is going to start um, some really cool things that we're going to learn about triangles. So let's go ahead and write this down. This is postulate number 19 and we're calling it SSS or side, side, side uh, congruence postulate. And what it says is, if three sides of a triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then we can assume that the two triangles are congruent. Um, you could try this out yourself. If you had three lengths and you made a triangle and you had those same three lengths and you drew it again, you'd be getting the exact same triangle, just maybe in a different position. So what we can say is if, in this example, segment AB is congruent to RS and if BC is congruent to ST and if the third side AC is congruent to RT then I can assume that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle RST. Okay? So let's go ahead and do one example related to this. I want you to prove that triangle KLM is congruent to triangle NLM, okay? So which means when I um, see them in a specific order, I need to relate them to those specific points as well. So um, I'm just given a diagram. So based on this diagram, I can already see that I'm given that KL is congruent to LN or I can say NL, let's say that. So KL is congruent to NL, and this is given. I'm also given that KM is congruent to NM. So KN is congruent to NM. This is also given. So based on side, 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 if I can get that this third side is congruent to the third side in the other triangle, then I'm done. And I can see that both of these triangles share LM. So really I can say that LM is congruent to LM because of the reflexive property. Look at that. I proved that all three um, sides in one triangle are congruent to the three sides in the other triangle. So I'm done. Triangle, let's see, KLM is congruent to triangle NLM because of side, side, side. And I'm done. This is pretty awesome. Really easy to do. We're going to look at an example now, though, that's going to show a little bit more information. Okay. This example says that I have two triangles, okay? The first one is titled triangle um, JKL, and it gives me the vertices for it, and it also gives me triangle RST, which um, it gives me the vertices. And so I need to graph the triangles and then show that they are congruent, okay? This might seem a little easy, but I'll show you why it's not. So let's go ahead and just graph it real fast. So my first uh, point, J, is at negative 3, negative 2. So negative 3 down negative 2. I'm going to label that. K is at 0 down negative 2. There's my K. And L is at negative 3 down to negative 8. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and connect all three of these vertices to draw my triangle. And you can do this as well. And then let's go ahead and graph RST. So the first one is uh, point R, which is at 10, 0. So all the way at 10, and this is R. I also have 10 down negative 3, so 10 down negative 3. This is point S. And I have another point at 4, 0. This is going to be labeled T. And I'm going to connect my dots. Okay. 
Um, automatically, it doesn't really look like these two triangles um, are necessarily congruent because they're in different uh, formations, okay? But we learned in our previous lesson about all these different transformations, okay? So maybe it's just rotated. So what I can do is I can look at the different sides of them just by counting and see, you know, if maybe some of their side lengths are the same. So let's look at JK. This looks like the shortest side so far, and its length is one, two, three units. So how about I see if the shortest length of this other triangle, RST, has the same length. Um, that looks like it would be RS, and that's also one, two, three units. So already I know that JK is congruent to RS because they have the same length. Um, let's look at another one. How about JL? That length starting at J and going down to L is one, two, three, four, five, six units. And this horizontal length for R to T is one, two, three, four, five, six units as well. Okay, so I can also say that JL is congruent to RT. But how can I find the distance for this diagonal line that's completing both of those triangles? Well, this is where we have to go back to the distance formula. If you remember, the distance formula from one point to another is the difference of the x values being squared added to the difference of the y values being squared and then taking the square root of all of that. Okay, so how about I um, find the distance from K to L. Okay, so K L. All right, let's check this out. Um, K, the X value is at zero. And L, the X value is at negative three, so minus negative three. I'm gonna square that. And then let's go back. The Y value for K is negative two minus the Y value for L, which is negative eight. So this is zero minus negative three, which is zero plus three, which is three. So three squared plus negative two minus minus, that turns into plus also, so negative two plus eight is six, so six squared. Three squared is nine, six squared is 36. I'm left with the square root of 45, which is three square root of five. So I found the length from K to L. Now, if I can find the length from T to S, and if it's the same, then these are congruent. But if it's off even just a little bit, then I'm gonna prove that they are not congruent. So let's just find this out. So the side TS, let's start with the X values. Uh, the X value for T is at four, minus the X value for S, which is 10. And I'm going to add that to the y value for t, which is 0, minus the y value for s, which is negative 3. Okay, let's rewrite this. 4 minus 10 is negative 6, so I'm going to square that. And 0 minus negative 3 is the same as 0 plus 3, so that's going to be 3 squared. Negative 6 squared is 36. 3 squared is 9. That's the same as square root of 45, which is the same as 3 square root of 5. Well, look at that. These are exactly the same. So that's telling me that KL is congruent to TS. So because I've proved that all three of the sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of the other, I have proved that both of the triangles are congruent to one another by side, side, side. So that's all that we're going to learn today. Um, I have one example for you to try. So on your own, I have two triangles for you. I want you to also graph them 
and then just as we did in the last example uh, test out by finding their distances and their lengths maybe using the distance formula to prove if these are congruent by side 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 but if any sides are not congruent then you've already proven that the two triangles themselves are not congruent